Hello, two-wheeled world, Zach Cords here, and welcome to the very first episode of Daily Rider. I'm a new host to RevZilla, but you might recognize my face from other videos on the internet where I point a GoPro at myself and then ride a motorcycle around. I've been riding motorcycles my whole life, and now that I have access to lots of different types of bikes, what I like to do is take you along for the ride. We learn about the machine together and uh, hopefully have a little bit of fun along the way. Eventually, I will commute to an actual office, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna take you on a loop that I've been doing during the COVID quarantine to test bikes while not getting a haircut. The new route includes all the different types of riding that we could think to put in there to give a little bit more rigorous test for the bike. And at the end, we're gonna rank them all on a leaderboard. So over time, we'll have a running tally of all the different bikes we've tested on the show and how they stack up as daily riders. I think it's gonna be pretty fun. So the hair is longer, the resolution is higher. May the wheelies be safe, may the back ends be long and noisy. Welcome everybody to Daily Rider. Okay, without further ado, time to introduce our first guest here on Daily Rider, and that is, of course, none other than the Kawasaki Versus 650 LT. That's standard issue Kawasaki parallel twin uh, with some storage in the saddlebags, upright riding position, and adjustable wind protection. The reason I chose it as the first bike on Daily Rider is that I feel like it's sort of the quintessential do-it-all street bike. It's a pretty good balance of price and power and handling, stuff like that. So I figured it'd be a good benchmark for the leaderboard we're gonna talk about later, and also a good way to explore this new route that we've come up with. So, let's go for a ride. Okie dokes team, here we go. First is 650 LT, 9200 bones, 8300 if you get the non-LT version uh, with which you do not get the hand guards and these great saddlebags, which actually we'll crack these open right now. These are worth talking about. I'm gonna mention how I like to open them with one hand. Uh, each side fits a full face helmet. Um, they're really, really excellent saddlebags. Uh, same ones that you get on the Versus 1000. The upgraded LT version you get for 900 bucks, you get uh, the saddlebags and the handcar. So arguably a pretty good deal. And I actually scratched it on something already. Sorry, Kawasaki. I'm gonna pay for that. Uh, what else we got here? Um, sort of typical Kawasaki wave rotors. I think these are 300 mil rotors with very simple two piston brakes, rubber lines, nothing special, but uh, work pretty well in general. This is the only colorway for uh, 2020 anyway, which has got, got kind of a cop bike uh, look to it. <laughs> the sort of gunmetal and white going on. Underslung exhaust, which means no center stand, which is a big hot button for a lot of people. But I say it's worth it for the luggage space of not having a pipe up high. But I don't know, I don't know that's just me. Kind of getting ahead of myself, I know. Um, all right, let's uh, fire it up. See what we got. Oop. I left it in gear. What an idiot. God, I hate it when people do that. But I did it because it's on this little slope here. And I didn't want it to tip over. Okay, let's try this again. Start it up. There it is. It's that little uh, parallel twin pitter-patter that we've grown to, um, I don't know, I won't say love. <laughs> you know, listen to. Um, yeah, not the... Not maybe the most lovely sounding engine in the world, but uh, we'll talk about that more later. Oh yeah, um, remote preload adjustment. Pretty keen. There are a lot of bikes more expensive than this one that do not have that nifty little feature. So another little uh, something to note about the Versus. Oh, I think one more thing. I'm just gonna show you the windshield adjusters. So this is how this works. You spin these loose, turn it up, tighten them. I'm gonna leave it down for now, but when we go on the freeway, we'll experiment with it up. Okay, all right, let's hit the road. Oh, it's gonna be a hot one. I'm schwitzing already. Wait for the fire to walk. As you do. Good job, guys. Oh, I caught up to the fire truck and now it feels a little awkward. I don't really know. He's gonna go through this red light. You're supposed to be 500 feet back, right? Yeah, he's going through the red light which means we can talk about some specs. You've got uh, a 33.1 inch seat height, which um, uh, at this stoplight, I have to say, that measurement always seems high to me. It feels like lower than, th 33 inches seems like a high seat, um, but the Versus 650 always feels kind of reasonable to me. It's got a pretty narrow standover height, but yeah, that's, you know, that's the measurement that we're going with. And it weighs about four, I think they claim 476, Kawasaki does, but the last time I weighed a Versus 650 LT myself 
it was basically 500 pounds right on the nose with a full tank of gas. And um, so 500 pounds is kind of a lot, you're thinking maybe, but that is uh, 500 pounds with a full tank. And the full tank is five and a half gallons of gasoline, which is a lot of gasoline for a motorcycle to carry. So it is, uh, you know, maybe fair that it weighs a little bit more than you might expect. Horsepower wise, you can claim maybe 68 or 70 from this bike. Um, but the last time I saw one of these motors on a dyno, it was 62, 65, something like that. It's an amount of horsepower that's both enough and not notable, frankly. <laughs> uh, but that's a quick rundown of specs for the old versus 650. Oh, there's, there's where the fire was. Oh, senior living home. That's no fun. So all the specs aside, one thing the Versus 650 does pretty darn well is be comfortable. It's just a very reasonable riding position. Um, as we will experiment here, we go out onto the freeway for a minute. That's the first experiment on this route is to hit the old straight and narrow. But yeah, back to riding position. The handlebar has a nice position to it. It's sort of a, a upright but sporty reach to the handlebar it's very yeah very comfortable the seat is a little soft for my taste but in general very comfortable um, and the distance to the foot pegs I feel like the pegs could maybe be a little bit lower but that's not really you know that big a deal um, I'm just at six foot two sometimes I get a little bit uh, I might get like a little bit cramped after a while sitting on this bike but a 33 inch seat height you can kind of understand why they wanted the seat to be a little bit higher but anyway in general quite a comfortable bike. And I guess since we're about to go out onto the freeway, let me have a minute. You're not supposed to adjust these while you're riding, but I'm just gonna do it real quick so that we can talk about wind protection. Okie dokie, as we merge out onto the meat grinder that is the 710 freeway here in Southern California. That's another reason that I find the Versus 650 quite a comfortable bike. Uh, it's good in traffic, right? You sit upright, you can move your head around and uh, you know swivel, keep your keep your eye out for cagers on a mission. And yeah, now that you're out onto the freeway, it's I must say quite a comfortable bike. Like I said, the riding position's good. Your feet sit right underneath your hips. Somewhere in my Instagram feed, where people are asking questions about the Versus 650, someone said, "Is this bike ready to go across the country?" Uh, I say yes. It show sure is. I would take this bike across the country tomorrow. It's ready, bone stock, and it would be pretty darn comfortable. Now I weigh 190 pounds. If you weighed, uh, you know, if you weigh less, you're gonna maybe think it's a little, a little stiff. And if, of course, if you weigh more, maybe think it's too soft. But in general, quite a nice balance in my opinion. Okay, dokey through the construction. Do this little construction chicane here. Test the handling a little bit. <laughs> Um, and while we're still on the straight and narrow with the windscreen up, um, another thing to address would be uh, engine vibrations. That's another question I got a lot of on the social media. And yeah, it's not a particularly smooth engine by design, that's for sure. Um, and I do get a little bit of buzzing uh, at freeway speeds at 5,500, 6,000 RPM, which is 75 or 80 on the freeway. Uh, especially in my feet for some reason. Uh, the seat and the, the handlebar are pretty good. And there's a lot of rubber mounts around this bike. And that was one of the big updates they made in 2015, I believe it was, when the bike got new styling and um, the foot pegs got lower and farther forward and uh, adjustable wind protection. So it got uh, quite a bit more refined and the, the motor mounts were changed then also and the bike got quite a bit smoother. And ever since then, in my opinion, it's um, quite a nice bike to ride long distances for all of the aforementioned reasons about comfort, but also just the engine works really well. I, I don't think that the, the vibes are oppressive in, in any way at all. Look at all those containers. Holy Moses. I was thinking like every, every one of those containers is one semi truck, basically. When you think about how many, it just blows my mind. It's like a sci-fi movie. It's crazy. Okay, as we change lanes here, one thing we gotta talk about is mirrors, obviously. Big talking point of mine about motorcycles in general, just like talking about mirrors. And the mirrors on the Versus 6 feet are quite good. These ones are placed nicely, they're a good shape, and the handlebar is rubber mounted, I believe. Yes, it sure is. <laughs> and that means that uh, some of the vibes are quelled in the bar where the mirrors are mounted. And yeah, I mean, you can read license plates in these babies. 
nice and smooth. Good mirrors. Starting to see, by the way, why I've got kind of a soft spot for this bike. <laughs> Good mirrors, comfy on the highway, adjustable wind protection. Whew. Whoa, no signal from the police officer. I'm not sure why, but that's disappointing. Nope, not doing anything. Just 10 and two. Anyway, another thing we can talk about is fuel mileage. Had someone on Instagram say, how dare you don't even think about publishing a review of this bike without talking about fuel mileage which was not so much a question as it was a demand <laughs> in my experience basically anywhere from 45 to 52 miles per gallon is what i see typically between uh 48 and 50. so with a five and a half gallon tank that gives you a lot of range you can really you can really truck it you can get 250 miles of range out of this bike which is um not unprecedented but that's a lot of range for a motorcycle, aside from a GSA that has an eight gallon tank or something like that. So that's another thing to note, I think. And I suppose while we're on the topic of fuel mileage, I should mention, uh, Ari Henning owns a Versus 650 and he went on a road trip. He was really flogging it up and down California and he had it all loaded down with camping gear and stuff. Uh, and he said he got 38, 37, something like that. So you can get poor gas mileage if you're um, really, really smoking it there, like Ari Henning. But in general, I would say 50, 45, 50, something like that. So this little section of road I've come to know as Clutch Hill, <laughs> because there's a whole slew of stop signs right in a row, and I find myself testing a clutch feel and throttle response along this section. What I like to try to do as a little uh, competition with myself, oftentimes the stop signs, roll up to the stop sign, come to a complete stop, and then go without putting a foot down and the balance of the bike has a lot to do with that, how sort of confidence inspiring it is. So see if we can do it. Zero miles an hour, no feet down. Kawasaki Versus, good balance, good clutch feel. Throttle response in general is a little bit abrupt, if I'm honest. I think I'd probably put the bike in maybe the 70th percentile or something. Uh, maybe a B minus, is that what that is? I don't know, it's been so long since I've been in school. The point is, it's good, it's not great. Uh, it is a little bit uh, herky-jerky if you're not careful in the on-off position of throttle, but uh, I sort of adapt to it after, I don't know, a few hours of riding, and um, in general, I don't think it's too bad, but it is a sticking point for some people. I guess while we're at this stoplight, we can talk about the dash, why not? A uh, very simple dash, uh, but a nice one, in my opinion. Got analog tack here, um, which is sort of a classic look. Digital speedo, gear position indicator, which it got in 2017 fuel gauge at the bottom clock upper left and then here are your options showing trip meters live mpg uh, and range which is a nice feature so i got 40 miles of range left we're down to the last bar here it might start flashing at me lots of range on this bike so i'm not too worried about it anyway nice clean dash nothing fancy but uh does the trick you know kind of like this bike for some reason this stretch of road always makes me think about like date night going on. I don't know. This is where maybe, maybe my wife and I had a really good conversation along the stretch of road or something <laughs> one time. But the point is now is a good time to talk about passenger comfort as good a time as any, I'd say. Passenger accommodations on the Versus 650 are quite good. The director of our show, Spencer, owns a Versus 650 and so does Aerie. So I spent a little bit of time back there myself. But um, I usually let my wife do the reviewing of passenger accommodations and she says that the Versus 650 is quite good. Nice soft seat. Um, she feels secure back there. She feels comfortable um, and she's five foot ten and has terrible knees. So she's a good judge of passenger comfort in my opinion. Um, as always, she loves it when there's a top box on there too. It gives a little backrest. That's a little added bonus if you do that with the Versus. Um, but in general, quite good passenger accommodations. Okay, doke. So this little stretch of twisty road here is not exactly Stelvio Pass <laughs> or anything, but I feel like it offers a good snapshot of a bike's handling and uh, you know how it handles not just going through turns but um, uh, slightly bumpy roads. And there's some tar snakes up here, that kind of thing. But yeah, it's a nice little stretch or a little bit uphill, a little bit of downhill. And this to me is where the Versus is the most surprising. It is a versatile system, right? That's where the name Versus came from, versatile system. So I think people mostly apply that to, yeah, you can ride it down the highway, you can ride it in a city, you can ride it kind of in a few different scenarios. And that's what makes it a versatile system, but not necessarily a sport bike. But the Versus 650 is 
quite a good little sport bike in my opinion actually it has really enjoyable character and it has sort of uh you know sport bike roots to a certain extent in so much as the ninja 650 is a sport bike i suppose the ninja 650 while we're on the topic i feel like on a, on the street like on a twisty road like this as fast as i would be willing to ride a ninja 650 i would ride a versus 650. Uh, there's no advantage on a twisty road in my mind come to think of it i might go so far as to say that i could ride a versus 650 around a racetrack as quickly as I could a Ninja 650. Ah, is that true? I don't know if that's true. Probably not. I bet the Ninja's a little bit faster. The, the riding position is a little bit sportier and it is lighter. Um, so yeah, I suppose the Ninja would be a little bit faster like in an outright lap time showdown. But the point is, yeah, it's a, the Versus is a, it's pretty good. I don't know, now I'm curious. I wanna do that test. I don't know, I guess comment below if you want me to do that test and I'll try to make it happen. <laughs> Coming up to a red light here. So we can talk about brakes. Mash on these brakes a little bit, get into the ABS. <laughs> um, sort of medium sized rotors and um, kind of old school calipers, not wildly powerful, but uh, they do the job. I think the, the power and feel is decent considering the hardware is not particularly interesting. So another piece of the Versus 650 that I think strikes a pretty good balance for sort of value and, uh, and cost. For those of you living in California or Europe, you'll notice I'm splitting lanes here up to a red light, which uh, someone in the Instagrams, I believe, suggested was not possible because the bags are far too wide and bulky. But I disagree because, I mean, the, the bar is already kind of wide. I don't think the saddlebag is really much wider than that. You do have to be a little bit careful, but uh, in general, very capable of uh, still being agile in traffic. Ooh, a little power wheelie <laughs> away from the stoplight. Oh, right versus 650. Look at you, rowdy little sucker. And that actually brings up a good point. We should talk about the engine a little bit because I, I mentioned in the intro that I don't think the engine is the most, what did I say? Not the best sounding engine in the world, but um, there's really no denying that the versus 650 engine is is fun. It's, a, it's very playful and um, energetic. You know, it sort of wants to rev and it feels like it wants to to, to accelerate and, and sort of play. It's sort of a puppy dog of an engine. Um, and I appreciate that aspect of it, considering um, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the, of the layout of the engine in general. We got sitting over there, we got an R3 over at uh, Tacos El Goloso, another 180 crank parallel twin. Another bike that I don't like the sound of very much, but another fun motorcycle. So, you know, I don't know, no denying it. Away we go! <laughs> this is a pretty, pretty good engine. People want to know how this bike compares to the Tracer 900. And I think that the Tracer 900 engine, that Yamaha Triple 847cc Triple is just an absolute gem. It is one of the best engines in motorcycling. It's really, really excellent. And it is better than the Versus 650 engine, full stop, in my opinion. However, I do think the Versus is uh, just sort of a, a better machine Overall, I think the wind protection is uh, better as standard. I think the seat's more comfortable. I like the riding position a little bit better. I think the chassis is a little bit more direct and uh, easy to use, uh, and it's cheaper. Then you got your old V-Strom 650. That's another one that people like to compare versus two. The V-Strom 650 is a good one, but the base bike is more expensive than the base versus by about 500 bucks. And while I like a V-Twin better than a parallel twin in general, the V-Strom is just, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of lopey and I don't know. It's just kind of like the AARP version of the Versus. <laughs> it's just kind of like slow and deliberate and calm in a way that makes me a little bit sleepy in general. Whereas the Versus is like, zing zing, I want to play, I want to go do stuff, which I like. Other comparisons people want to know about Tenere 700, the new T7. Uh, I have not ridden the T7, so I can't uh, I can't really say to be honest with you But I did just talk to my buddy Spurge. You just got back from the launch riding the T7 around and he said That uh, that it's a good bike and it compares um, 
to the Versus in more ways than people might expect. He said it feels more street bikey and less adventure than he thought it would despite the 21 inch front wheel. It is a little bit more expensive than the Versus and of course it has a smaller tank, 4.2 gallons instead of 5.5. So yeah, a little bit different bent, uh, not just styling, but sort of, you know, a little bit different mantra of that bike. I think on paper, the Versus still kind of has it licked as a daily rider. It got good luggage options, it's cheaper, better range. I don't know. So just, just throwing that out there. NC750, that was another one that someone brought up, NC750. If the V-Strom 650 is sort of more calm and sedate than the Versus 650, the, oh, KLR 650, hey, that's another, that's a good one. It's sitting in the back of that pickup truck, we could compare Versus to that. But first, NC750, that's what we were talking about. The NC750 is even more calm and reserved and, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, sedate, I guess, uh, than, the V-Strom. So it's just another step in that direction. It is a good commuter. It does have that front trunk, frunk storage area right here, which is nice. Uh, but um, I don't know. I like, I like the Versus energy. I do. <laughs> Look at that. I just ripped a little power wheeling. I guess the last bike I'd bring up would be Honda CB500X, which is an excellent little motorcycle. Basically just a smaller Versus. So it's a good option. Um, if you're worried this bike could be too big for you, for example, and it's uh, 6700 bucks, I think, base price. So it is cheaper uh, than a Versus, uh, arguably some good competition for the Versus there. I don't know, just a thought. So we're coming up to the section of the Daily Rider route that I'm most excited about. A uh, little off-road section. <laughs> I mean, I don't know off-road. It's uh, sort of like an urban hike, <laughs> if you will. Uh, it just allows us to check out how the bike will handle something that's not pavement. Um, so here we go. A little railroad track ADV test. <laughs> yeah. Here we go versus. Woo! <laughs> a little swayzy. So here you go. You're trundling down your little campsite to, uh, uh, sorry, trundling down your dirt road to the campsite if you want to. Sometimes I run through the sand here to see how it'll handle that kind of thing. A little sketchy. A road tire and uh, 17 inch front wheel. So it's not really an off-road bike, but handles pretty well in these situations. There's a little jump here I like to take sometimes. Here we go, here we go. Rap. Oh. <laughs> yeah, bottomed the suspension out a little bit there. But, you know, not bad, right? Not bad. I got, uh, what is it, 56 liters of storage back there. And I just did a jump. Not bad. This old bike. Not bad at all versus. Let's see if we can get a woolly out of you. Here we go. Oh, look at it go. Third gear, fourth gear. I gotta put it down. I'm gonna get in trouble. I, I mean, I would have gone all the way to 200 miles an hour, I assume, but I gotta put it down. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> Just went down a little dirt road. You know, did a, did a big stonking wheelie. I don't know. Pretty good bike. That's all I'm saying. So now's a good time, I think, to talk about price in general and how uh, the Versus kind of stacks up. So like I said in the beginning, $9,200 for the Versus LT with the handguards and saddlebags. Uh, $8,300, I believe, for the base bike. And I would say that stacks up pretty well against the competition. Uh, it's cheaper as a base price than the V-Strom 650. It is comparable to a NC750 in, in my mind, sort of in price and in, and in character. But like I said, the V-Strom and the NC are just sort of much slower and uh, more mild. This bike's a lot more exciting. Tracer 900, uh, you know, it is more exciting, but it's also 10.7, 10.6. And uh, I think if you really want to get uh, a tracer that's going to be a lot better than a Versus 650, you got to get the GT. And even then you don't get saddlebags that are as good. You do get heated grips, TFT dash, center stand, uh, that kind of thing. But that bike's a lot more expensive. Oh, that guy's truck's open. Careful there, buddy. But yeah, I mean, that's 13 grand for a Tracer 900 GT. So I don't know, yeah. And then yeah, Tenere 700, which I think has potential to, to steal a little bit of market share from the Versus just because it is kind of rugged. I do think it looks cooler. Um, but yeah, you don't get as much range um, and uh, luggage options, as far as I know, are not quite as good. Yeah, I don't know. All in all, a little hard to argue with the, the Versus 650, I think. This is why it's, the, why it's the first guest on Daily Rider. Okay, so we just gotta zip down the freeway and we'll be just about home. 
Can we get a, can we get a third gear wheelie out of the Versus? <laughs> oh, not really. <laughs> okay, so second gear wheelie was good. Third gear wheelie, not so much. Just got to merge onto this here 405. And we'll be back to the hood. Exit the freeway. I like this little set of corners actually. Fast right. A little downshift into a left. Yeah. We even caught the green light. How about that? Good stuff. Must be our lucky day riding that Versus 650. We try and get a little back in here. Dump the clutch. Yeah, right. A little bit. <laughs> it's ABS a little bit. Uh, Versus 650 does have ABS that you can't shut off. But here we are. Back to, back to the little alley parking lot here. Line it up. You can listen to this Versus 650 one more time. There it is. The sound of performance, sort of. <laughs> the sound of just the right amount of performance, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, there you have it. Versus 650. Oh, that was a pretty successful uh, ride, I think. Um, so, now we're going to answer some Instagram questions that I saved because I feel like um, a lot of people commented and had interesting questions to ask. Once known as Coach, I like that username a lot, asks, how would this fare as a weekend tour? Excellent, I think. Uh, hopefully we covered that in the video as to why I think that's the case. But yes, weekend tour, absolutely. Ride Fast Die Old asks, would you take it cross country? Yeah, I feel like we covered that also. Um, but absolutely, it's ready right now. As it sits, bone stock, showroom condition. Cox 24 asks, base versus 1000 or versus 650 and save some money. In my mind, the versus 1000 is unquestionably uh, sort of bigger, higher performance, um, has more features, you know, it has more stuff, but I just don't know that it actually serves the purpose of being a versatile system better than the versus 650. And the full zoot one, the, the LTSE or whatever it is with the electronic suspension is 18 grand. I mean, it's double the price of versus 650. So I just, I never find myself recommending a versus 1000 unless there's a really specific reason that people want, uh, the bigger, chassis more weight more power or or the more features but in general versus 650 just checks the list i think vl florian asks why not just get a tracer 900 that will do commuting just as well as the versus but will also be more fun on weekends ride weekend rides excuse me uh you know if the, if the power and that kind of thing uh is really going to make that big a difference then yeah i think um that would be a good option for you like i said i think that this bike kind of has the tracer licked from a comfort standpoint um from a versatility standpoint and uh, from a feature standpoint, with the base bike anyway. So that's my take. Hunter Hates Jiu Jitsu asks, is this too much bike for a beginner? Looking at the Versus and CB500X. So we talked about CB500X just a little bit and all those comments stand. I think if you're coming from uh, a bike already, like if you have lots of experience on dirt bikes or um, you know if you have some motorcycle experience, I don't think that you'll find this bike to be too big, uh, but it also depends a little bit on your stature. It could feel a little bit too big. I'd swing a leg over one in a showroom and see. Uh, the CB500X is definitely a little bit less intimidating and that would be a great option. They're very comparable. Sim Barr asks, would this be a bike that someone who is six foot six could fit on? Uh, yeah, I think you'd be fine. You might want a slightly thicker, taller seat and maybe a bigger windscreen um, to cover up your torso. But in general, very comfortable bike and I bet you'd like it. Again, I'd uh, try and find one on a showroom floor, swing a leg over one and give it a try. But I bet you'd find it works out just well. Just for well. Just, it just works out for real well, great. Ignacio SMP says the first generation Versus was 35 kilograms or 77 pounds lighter than this one. Where's all that weight and why should someone buy this one instead of buying an older model? I don't know exactly about the 77 pounds. I'd have to fact check that, but it is heavier. Um, and I think uh, it just comes from refinement. It just um, got those, uh, you know, better motor mounts. The the wind protection got more complete. Um, it, it just, it got to be a little bit more advanced and feature laden motorcycle, which makes it a little bit heavier. It carries more gas. So um, that's part of it. But I would say uh, that it got quite a bit better. Is there a reason not to buy an older one? No, absolutely not. The older ones are also great. So that's something that you should consider for sure. Last question comes from Patizo1. Uh, Patizo, longtime viewer of my videos. It's nice to see your username, Patizo. Is it too useful or is it still fun? And I think this is a good one to end on because I like the way that question was phrased. Is it so practical that it's no longer enjoyable to ride? And another person had a similar question that I saved. For me, 
it does deliver what you need from a sport bike. Uh, as far as canyon roads and as far as acceleration, it's fun, it's peppy, it's got a lot of good energy, um, and it carves through corners really, really nicely. If you can get past the sort of pocket protector practicality of it, I think it does deliver a good amount of fun and you will find yourself wanting to go on weekend rides, that kind of thing. Um, but you know, there are some people that just wouldn't be able to live with it. You know, they like, they need to have a sport bike or they need to have a naked, they need to have something less practical just because it sort of bubbles with that, uh, energy that you get from <laughs> something that you need, uh, or sorry, something that you want, but don't need. So thank you so much for your Instagram questions. That was great. I really appreciate you asking all that stuff. Um, last thing we got to do is rank this sucker on the leaderboard. So let's go into headquarters. And here we are. Daily Rider Headquarters, um, AKA the room attached to my garage. <laughs> but anyway, here it is, the Daily Rider leader board. I'll take you for a quick tour of it. It's not terribly complicated, if I'm honest. So you got a basic uh, price chart here, you know, expensive at the top, cheap at the bottom. And then over here you got dorky, and then at the other end of the x-axis, you got cool. And then up here you have the Daily Rider leaderboard. This is where the bikes will be ranked in order of best and worst daily rider. I foresee a fair amount of controversy with your friends, my Revzilla colleagues, everyone. I think everyone's gonna have their own opinion. I think it's gonna be fun, is the point. And as I talked about in the ride, the Versus 650 is a pretty good balance of a lot of things, right? It's not particularly expensive or cheap. It's not particularly dorky or cool, in my opinion. So one of the reasons I chose it is that I think it goes basically right here, smack in the middle of the chart. So we're gonna drop that little green magnet there for what I hope are obvious reasons. And then we're gonna write Kawasaki versus 650. There you have it. First bike on the chart, smack dab in the middle. Um, and then I made a little magnet for it here. So it will ride right up here uh, at the very top of the Daily Rider leaderboard because it is uh, the best and worst bike that we've ridden so far. So there you have it, a new route, a new leaderboard. I'll get a haircut eventually, but I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. The wheelies were safe after all. Um, and I'll see you on the next daily ride. Peace out. Holy Look at all of this traffic. Woo. That's a lot of trucks.